Hello everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and today we are carrying on with part six of how to make a junk journal from an old book, The Slow Crafting Method. Uh, taking you through this step by step, I'm going to put a link to a playlist down below in the description box in case you've um, missed any of the other episodes of this and um, so hopefully it's easy to follow along if you're if you're uh, just embarking on junk journaling or maybe you've been around a while and just want to uh, see somebody else's perspective or pick up some new tips and tricks um, there's always more to learn right okay so here we go um, this is what we have created so far and we have a few things in it this is our old uh, book that we have turned into um, uh, a new junk journal that is ready to be filled with all sorts of wonderful goodies. And I want to um, use some of the things we already made in the last video. I'm going to go ahead. I think I've decided that as we make things, we're going to put them to use immediately in the journal so you can see the evolution happen and we're not waiting to the end to put everything in because that just makes no sense. Okay, now we already have started with some pockets and tucks and things like that. So let's just kind of see where we are at. We have a little tuck here, okay. Now we did make this the other day and I didn't glue it in and I don't know why. So let's, we're gonna go ahead and do that. And um, <clears throat> I was using the front pages of the book, uh, these fly leaf pages to decorate. And I think I will just go ahead and place this in the book somewhere. Here would be a nice, that would look very nice on there actually. Maybe I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Do we have yes, this extra writing space down here decorated? Where's the glue? Somebody pull out the glue. Sunny, get the glue. Okay, mom, I'm on it. Here you go. Thank you. Uh, he's so helpful in the craft room, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I uh, hope you're having a glorious day and all is well and you know, um, you're relaxing in your crafting. I'm using Fabrifix glue here, clear silicone glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. Okie dokie, get your edges done well. And we'll just glue this in. I think a nice, like, lower central location will work well for this piece. And we're just gonna press that down and let that adhere. And now we have a few other pieces that I'm going to go ahead and put into the book so we can say we did. Uh, so this is in the first, we have four signatures we're working with in this book. Uh, doesn't matter how many you have, you can make it, tailor it to whatever book you have. That's kind of pretty, let's see. Now I think I want this to be clipped in uh, because it's going to be a removable. And let me just grab some cutie, cute, cute, um, Paper clips that might work well in this little book here. I'm just grabbing some some fun ones that I have. I have some that I pre-made and some that are just of interesting shapes. I'm just going to put some of these down here so they're ready to go. Okay. And um, now I'm not going to completely decorate the pages that these are going to go on because that may come later, um, depending on how ornate the journal becomes. But I think I'm going to do a wraparound with this little uh, card that I made. And maybe we will put this, maybe I'll use this. Oh, that's kind of pretty, a little bird paper clip. And maybe we'll just put this here. There we go, all tucked in, ready to go. Now let's move along to um, section number three. And we have a pocket and we have some collage art. And you could go anywhere, you don't always have to start in the same place, it can be random. Let's see, this has a place to write on the back, so maybe I would want that to be a removable as well. Don't have to, you could glue it down if you feel better. Um, but I think I'm going to maybe place it here. That looks like a nice page, a nice welcoming page. Look at you welcoming and all, so welcoming. Maybe we'll use one of these admit ones. Paper clips, there we go. So we have that in and then we, we Oh, we did a little fancier pocketing on this one last time. Um, so I don't have something for the last one because I ran out of the red paper because that's just the way it goes sometimes. Uh, use what you have and then just carry on. So I think what I'd like to do is take you down the next path of, um, I showed you these uh, leg, uh, these lists that I made as I was uh, learning, like in the process of um, things that I could draw from. I was using these lists as inspiration and they have all sorts of ideas that you can pull from if you forget like what should I do next? I have no idea. I'm lost. I'm out here. I'm, I'm drowning. I'm in the, out in the middle of the ocean. I, got, I don't know what to do. It's okay. We, we can refer to these lists. Let's see what we have on this list. Let's just go. Okay. 
collage. Well, we already did that one. Pocket page and tuck page. Okay, pocket page, I would like to bring a sense of completion to some of the things that we have made. So I think I'm going to go ahead and complete some of the pockets that we made. Like, in other words, I want to fill them. I want to fill them so you can see what the book is going to start to look like. So here is a little pocket or a tuck. It's a, a L shape would be a tuck, I guess. Uh, you know, splitting hairs here. It's all good. Um, what can we put in those? Anything you like. I tend to gravitate towards um, something different than what the pocket looks like. Uh, so this little tuck has some print on it. So maybe I want to put something plain or unique uh, in here that might contrast well. And I thought since this is um, a red book that's called Heartthrobs, maybe I want to um, put some Valentine things in it, even though I know I'm missing Valentines. It's okay because these are still uh, unique little um, uh, pieces of ephemera from days gone by. And if you don't have a Valentine, you could make a Valentine. You could, and it doesn't have to be a Valentine. I'm just trying to give you ideas of what you could do. So um, I'm going to put some of my old ephemera in here, and then we're going to do other things as well. So don't worry if you don't have this. So let's see. I mean, I, th I think this little girl is just adorable. So I think I'm just going to come back here, so tuck her in there. I just think she looks so cute there. So we're going to call that a day and move on. And we're going to find the next pocket that would be in uh, signature number two. Here we are in signature number two, because I have no idea where I put the pocket. See, this is why it's going to be easier when we move forward, because I will have already, I will place the pot. Oh, you know what it was? I wanted it to dry. That's what it was. Yes, wanted it to dry. I know. I don't, I don't generally wait for that but it is it is good practice yes because then your stuff your very important ephemera and specialty papers will not get stuck so maybe I'm going to tuck you in there I got you I could put you in there will you fit or would you go better maybe you'll fit better okay we have you in there and then we have this guy yeah and then we're just going to tuck you there there we go all right so those are done deals and we can put more things in there or fewer things in there totally your choice Ah, well, that wasn't so bad. No, not at all. Not at all. No. Um, okay. So, uh, the tuck. Oh, I know what today officially we are going to do the envelope flip out. Yes. So we've done a few pockets and a few tucks and we're going to do more of those in time, but I want to show you some different things as we go through here. So I grabbed just some examples of envelopes. And um, even though we're going to use the same concept in each signature, it's just an option of a way to move through a journal. Um, your pieces can look quite different. For example, maybe you have a little unusual envelope. Maybe you're going to make this envelope out of a piece of scrap paper. That would be fun too. Uh, maybe you have a cutie little envelope that you bought online. Maybe you bought it from Etsy or AliExpress or uh, eBay, but they have some cute little envelopes that you can uh, buy that are pre-made. Uh, maybe you embossed some envelopes. Maybe you have a, a big shot or a, one of those, I don't know, does the cry cut do that? I'm not sure. But um, you, uh, if you have the Sizzix big shot, you can crank it through and put envelopes through and they give you these beautiful finishes, which are very fun. And then you can also um, get some old uh, vintage uh, ephemera type envelopes. This one is from, this is to Miss Lizzie Homer in 1932. And who's this? Arlington Gaslight Company. There you go, from 1933, I think it says. Uh, but yeah, you can incorporate these into your journals. Now, I specifically said envelope flip out. So if we go with that concept, that doesn't mean that you can't use other envelopes in your journal, not as flip outs, but maybe as removables, uh, things like that. But uh, let's just go with the envelope flip out concept concept and see where it takes us. Okay, so where will we go? Let's go somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the, in the, oh, we don't have anything here. There's nothing here. Huh. Okay, well, I'm going to put something there just since it's here so we can all see. I'm going to have this glass sticker, which is red. I'm just going to pop it in there for now. There, I feel complete now. We can move on. Okay, um, that happens sometimes. You know, we run amok as we do. Uh, here's a nice place. Here's this pretty pink page. Very pretty. And I have this nice white contrasting uh, envelope, which I think would just be adorable. Many ways to attach this envelope, but the basic easiest way is to glue the, the flapper on the back and the envelope works like a little door like that. Okay. And you can also orient these up and down or this way as well. So you have uh, three ways to do that. You could also take this envelope and glue the flap right to this page, which is another option, which I, I think I might do in this case. Um, just because I, I just like the way it opens and, and um, uh, I just, I don't know, I just 
feel like going for that in this circumstance. Okay, so I think I'm going to, oh, you know what I'm gonna get? I'm gonna get some gold gilding. I think this just calls for gold gilding. Okay, this is gold gilding paste or gilding wax. And I think I'm going to glue that down, but maybe, I, do I want to ink it? Maybe I want to ink it. Uh, but the contrast is very nice as it is. Maybe I don't want to ink it. That's very nice contrast already, so I'm not going to ink it. That is, that is where I'm going with this, yes. But maybe I want to cover this with something. Oh, I could cover it with a book page. That would be really cool. So where's that book block? Here it is. Here we have some book. Oh, that's nice, that would work really well. I'll just take this back page off. And what I can do, the easiest way to do this, is you take this and you put some uh, glue stick on it. There we go, get your glue stick. This is Scotch Great glue stick, if anybody's curious, just my favorite glue, um, glue stick. All right, there you go. And then you put your page on there. Now you might want to, oh, let's grab our ruler and just tear it off so we have a, a written edge. I'm just taking it down to the text. Okay, and now I'm going to place it here. I got mostly the text, that's pretty good. Just take it about, uh, let me take it closer, um, a little smidgen away from the fold so it doesn't get involved in the fold. Yeah, you just want to keep it close but not right in the fold. There we go. Okay, now you could take the ruler and just tear along here so you don't have to be spending hours trying to get that to m match up, right? There we go. These little pieces. Okay, get a little pair of scissors. Little tiny, whoa, where are you? Oh, you're, it's too close. Hang on, let me back up. Okay, here we go. And I'm just gonna trim what uh, the last little couple pieces just so it's all nice and pretty. And that's the side you're not going to see anyway. So, okay, there we go. Now I have that. So when I put this down, it's upside down. Look at that. Oh, I could do it like this. You could totally do it like this. And also realize, yeah, your, your envelope could open this way. Maybe we'll do that because that's the way the writing goes. Just saying. Um, not mandatory, but uh, it is plausible. We are in the land of plausibility. And this is the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you put it on and you realize it um, may have been more advantageous to do it the other way, but hey, this is where we are. So I have my walnut stain and my worn lipstick, the colors I'm gonna work with. And I'll probably be grabbing the black at some point, just getting my daubers out. Just getting me daubers. All right, got me daubers. Uh, maybe black. Okay, go find the black pan. I'm, I'm looking, I'm searching. Yeah, it's like we're in the craft room together, you know, because we're in the craft room together. Yep, that's right. Just digging for the stuff. Here's the black. Got black soot. Inking. All right, here we go. And this is just going to increase the contrast because now I've gone cream and pink, which are a little closer together. They're not the same color, but I have lost a little bit of the, uh, the contrast. So let's see if we can bring it back. A little bit of black. Yeah, I think that, that pops nicely. Do you like that? Okay, thank you. <laughs> and uh, we could, do we want to? No, no, I don't. Okay, but maybe here, maybe, maybe here. All right, let me just borrow some of the rest of this. I'm just gonna tuck it in here so that I can, can ink the edge. Oops. Okay, for just a little extra contrast. Okay. Well, you know, if I've come this far, I might as well just ink the rest of it. Okay, here we go. I'm inking. It wasn't mandatory, but I, I walked myself into it, and I, I decided, that, uh, yeah, I like it. So that was the decision that was made. I don't have to ink this side. So you could leave it like this, and the ink would be a surprise this way. Hmm. And I think I'm going to follow the, the edges of the envelope, the way it's folded with this, just to give it a little pizzazz. There we go. Yeah, I think... Nothing uh, overreaching, nothing overpowering. Very easy to do. All right. So now we will affix this here. And I think I'll do this with a glue stick. You could do it with uh, fiber fix, a wet white glue or a glue stick. All will work. And then just put it in the position that you want. 
not too close to the edge so it doesn't abut. No abutting, please. <laughs> it just crams everything too tightly into the spine. And there we go. Now we have a place. And we're going to go ahead and fill these things as we go. So I have just a little pile of fun things. So I have this little book page I thought was so pretty. And um, it has a little... Uh, to my dear friend, Patsy Brusat. That's so nice of her, isn't it? Um, I don't know who Patsy Brusat is, but I like this page and I just really want to put it in here. So I think I'm going to fold this. Maybe I want to cover this on the back with some, what have I got over here? Let me get some plain paper or something. Oh, that's pretty. What's that? Just some simple paper with, oh, here we go. This is perfect. Okay, an old piece of uh, tea dyed paper. Maybe I just want, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Patty Bruce said, I think I'm going to cover you. And I'm just going to tear out a piece. Well, let me use my tearing ruler to, I like the, I like the, um, the flowers around it. That's pretty. All right, let's find a piece that fits inside here. Okay, there we go. Good so far. Good so far. Coming over yonder. Did I take an, oh, look at that. Too much. <laughs> so it goes sometimes okay dedication well we could leave that word maybe that might be the thing to do let me make sure i didn't go over too far no okay all right here we go now i have a nice little piece in here but now i think i would like to ink this let me ink this i'll leave the word dedication that's a nice word maybe you would like to dedicate that page to somebody um whoever the recipient is maybe they have a special someone okay here we go here we go all right in there very nice. Okay, so we're going to um, glue this. Oops, oh, yeah, yeah. Runaway glue. Okay, that's all right. We'll glue everywhere. Oh, goodness. All right. And we're are we covered? We can slide it over. We have a second. We have a second. We get a wet nap. And it's always a good idea to have one at the ready. I got a little glue up here. Okay, that's good. We'll glue on the side. There we go. We are good. Oops, nope, I didn't fall off the chair. I know it sounded like it, but my foot slipped. <laughs> okay, are you still there? I hope so. Okay, so we have this. All right, so I think I am just, maybe I want some lines on that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. Okay, what do we got? We got a small Faber-Castell artist pen, number 199. Okay, and it's a little damp, but it's all right. Okay, is it? Now this is just like a style that I'm going to be probably doing through here so that somebody has lots of extra writing room. And you can, you can um, use a ruler, you can use these uh, line stamps, but I like it when it looks like, uh, I like them all actually, so I'm not, a, I'm not against anybody using line stamps or a ruler for God's sakes. Like there's anything wrong with it. No, no, no. Okay, now to, for you to fit, you're going to fit perfectly. I'm going to fold you in half and you will be the entry in here. That's right. And then we'll have the little birdie peek up. Nice, eh? And, and we can decorate more here, but we're just going to go with basic construction so you can kind of see what we're working with here. I have a little bit of gilding paste and I think I will come along and uh, I'm just going to do like spot gilding, maybe on the corners. Yeah, just to, to give a little fancy foo. You know what I mean? A little fancy foo. Nothing too much. Am I going to indicate? Well, that looks pretty, doesn't it? I don't know if you can see that, but that looks really, I'm gonna maybe zoom in so you can see a little more. The way the, the gilding paste picks up the um, um, embossing, very cool. Um, just a little bit in the center, maybe. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, All right, there we are. Now, to have a little something on the corner to indicate the opening, which could be anything. It could be, it could be a little button. How about a button? That would be really cute. Let me get a very small button. Um, so this is, you know, crafting is a lot of getting up, hopping up, going to get something, coming back. Uh, you just never know what direction you're going to go. Oh, this is a pretty button. Let me see. Here's an old... Uh, glass Victorian button and here's a, a newer one but the color is nice so let's let's see this one or this one 
Yeah, oh, I kind of like that. That's very pretty. I, I, it's not as much contrast, but you know, there's something about that old, the old shell glass style buttons. Just so pretty. All right, we're putting you down. Yeah, there we go. And it's already got a string in it. Yay. Okay, so that definitely says, open me. I have something in there. Look at that, big surprise. Okay, we carry on. That was signature number one. And well, now we'll go to signature number two. We're using the envelope flip concept here. And maybe now I want to use um, a, a vintage or antique. Look at that, oh, look at all the gold. Um, a vintage or antique envelope. And some, a lot of these have been opened already, so there's an opening. You could just tuck something in here. Now let's see what we do have. We do have these pictures from the book, which are nice. And I don't know why I didn't put these already in, so maybe I'm going to incorporate them into the book. Although, um, I did leave a flap on here. Maybe we're gonna glue those onto a book. Maybe not yet, okay. If I have this, this would fit, this would fit. Okay, what is this? This is a little sewn pocket that I made a while back. This is made from scrapbook paper, and this is also scrapbook paper. It's a little um, junk journal card inside a tall pocket, and you can put that right inside an envelope. You totally can. All right, so I'm gonna put you in there. That's pretty. And, all right, so that's what I'm going to put in here. Now, do I want to put something on the front? And I'm feeling like, hey, I want to use something from the book again. So I have this. I don't know why I keep wanting to use something from the book. I don't always do that, but I can. And uh, I just want to show you options. So you have, I'm going to grab my butterfly stamp. Cut punch, not stamp, punch. <laughs> okay. Maybe like this. Or with the writing. I think maybe not with the writing. Maybe it shows up better. Okay. And so I'm going to ink it in a little pink because it'll make it show up a little bit more against the green. And it also is flat. So these punches are, are a nice way to use very uh, soft or fragile paper if um, you want to do so. And I'm not going to drag that with my thumb. It's a little bit too thin across the glue stick. So I'm just going to use some Fabrifix here. Put this down, probably too, too much, that's okay. And there we go, so now we have a little surprise in here. Now, to technically make this a flip, okay, we need to be in two, number two, and I'm going to go to a page where there is nothing yet. So let's see, and where there will be some contrast. Okay, so that is, this is open, I have tucked, but I want to make this into a flip. So maybe I can adhere it at the top and make it a flip like that. Is that the right page? I don't know, I gotta make sure it's the right page. This is on a green page, that might be better. It's a light green page. What about over here? That's a pretty page. Look at that page. All right, that, that page will do. Um, I'm gonna use a piece of fabric. And let me see, I'm just gonna go in my little, my little tickle trunk here of fabric. I just get something, a little, I just need a little something. A little anything, what's this? Here we go. That's kind of cute. It has a little bit of red in it, goes with the theme, and let's see how this goes. All right, so we're gonna put a little cut, in. this is a cotton muslin. Okay, give us a nice thicker piece. Have a nice torn edge, that's always fun. A nice torn edge, yeah. Fraying, fraying, that's always the word that um, evades me, fraying. Fraying, I am now fraying the edges. Fraying is an option, just like inking is an option. And there we go. So an easy way to make a flip is you just adhere the half part of the top of the fabric to your page and then the, the bottom half to your whatever it is, an envelope or something like that. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use Fabrifix, it's a stronger glue. And uh, I think it will work well in this case. Okay. All right, I'm gonna use a little finger smoosh here just to spread. And I have a little curling fabric there, so we shall see. Okay, put this down, orient, I'm orienting. Okay, putting it down, giving it a second to hold. Then we will test it. And you can do more decor at the top if you'd like to do that. Um, you could decorate this up a little bit more, but we're just going for basic construct today. And remember, we already have a little surprise in here. So maybe, maybe we want to darken this edge so we can let them know something. This is my indication that something has gone on here. You see that? 
Okay. Yeah, so that might give them an inclination to peek inside there. And they're going to probably get to know after a while that there are going to be hidden things in here. All right, so let's flip that up. Now, if you feel unsure about the security of whatever glue you used here, um, you can always put another piece of something here to secure it half on here and half on here, and that will give you a super secure. But uh, sometimes I, I don't put those final things in until I go through the rest of the journal and decide, does it need it? I'm going to let it dry and then decide later, does it need it? That's an easy way to approach that. Now with the flips, you also have all this beautiful area here, which you can do things with um, in your future decorating. You can put um, rubber stamps or stickers or uh, other pockets, things like that. Um, but you may want to go through in waves the way we are addressing each uh, signature first to set to uh, judge your thickness to see if your journal is getting too fat or if you still have room to put things in it. Okay, too fat. What is that, right? Bah ha ha. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay. So there we go. All right, so let's go into uh, signature number three. It's a blue page, that's pretty. And what other envelopes do we have? Missy Pants, what did you pull out? Okay, I have this one, I have this one, I have this one. So I have a few options to pick from. Well, let's see, I think, um, I think this guy would look kind of cute on here. He's pretty, but this guy would also look very nice. But he would look nice too. Um, all right, you know, I think what we will do with this little guy since he's just a little tiny little guy, he, 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 you know, um, I think we will do um, an upper flip. Yes, we will just glue him here and we will have him flip up and there will be a little something inside there. But, but I do want to ink him. I think he will, he will look very handsome inked. So we're going to use some walnut stain. This is dry. There's no shocker in my craft world. Okay, just wetting it a little bit. I just use water, sometimes water and a little bit of glycerin. Um, but it just kind of helps things move along a little better, a little faster. Okay, there we go. And we'll just ink around this guy. Yeah. So you have a lot of uh, things that you can put inside a, a junk journal. If you need more ideas, feel free to check out my Using Up the Book Pages series. I have lots of ideas for things you can add to your junk journal pages. Um, some things create no bulk. Some cre create a lot of bulk. So it just depends on what, what you want to do with the style you want. And uh, you take it to as bulky as you feel comfortable. Yeah. Okay. That we're going to glue. So we don't have to ink that part. Okay. So I'm just going to glue this on the back side, and it's going to go like this. All right. So let us do that. All righty. Okay. Where's my, there it is, a little glue on here. Okay, that over there. And now we're gonna need something small and cute to put in here. I'm, I'm bringing it to the edge, but not quite in the, in the seam, just a smidgeroo. And if you wanna check to see if you're even, which I'm rarely, um, you have a second or so to move it with the Craft uh, Scott Create glue stick. Okay. Oh, that's not even. Look at that. That looks not, not even. <laughs> okay. Let's see. That's that better? Or worse? Oh, that's. Whoop, I don't know. Okay. I think I got to pull it down on this side. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now let's check it out. That looks a little better. Looks okay on that side. Not bad. We'll go for not bad. All right. Um, I'm going to put a little something in here just for fun. I have this cute little uh, voc uh, it's not a vocabulary card. It's a uh, flashcard for multiplying. Fast. Two times four. Did you get it? Hmm, good. All right. So I'm going to tuck this in here. It'd be a nice, fun little thing for somebody to find. Now it, you got to make sure it's not too tall. Okay. Now if it's too tall, it's going to uh, you're going to impede. So you could you could come along and just trim it. I think that's what I will do. Sometimes you just need a little hair off, and you can adjust your things. You know, it's okay. They don't fit exactly. You can, you know, what we call make it fit. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Okay. Now it fits. And I would like something on here. And um, now that could be something from the book or it could just be any random thing. And I think this, I'm going to use a random thing. And I'm going to come over to my, um, maybe I'm going to put, um, oh, this lady is very pretty. Let's see, would she look nice on there? Yeah, she might. Have, oh, okay, that was my knee. Yeah, no, it's okay though. I'm all right. Yeah, don't worry. Um, a little sticker on there. Okay. And I think you can ink these. I think she needs to be inked. Give her a little bit more contrast. 
Yes, there we go. Now let's see, can we get her apart? Probably not. We'll try. We'll give it the three times a go, and if she doesn't, we'll just glue her right down. Okay. Yep, oh, she's coming off. Okay. All right, it's all right. Try not to tear her, Pam. Don't tear her. Okay. Now, we will put, we will run her across a little extra glue stick. Just say we did. It, it, right and left. The bottom. Okay, didn't decapitate her. Way to go. You know, sometimes you never know. It happens. Okay, there we are. Whoop, she's on an angle. Oh, goodness gracious. That's okay, though. We will, uh, I want to, like, maybe put something here so it doesn't look like she's on such an angle. And she, she's like, oh, oh, it's not the worst thing I know, but hey. Um, let's see. Let's go for, oh, what's that? Okay. We have a little bit of music paper. That might look nice. We could do a little mini collage here to save the day. Yes. Yes, we could do that. It's a mini collage there. That's very nice. Yes. All right. We'll just do a little mini collage. Someone can come along and do that. That's totally fine. Yeah. Because sometimes things don't land where we intended. And, uh, you know, hey, <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes. Okay, there we go. All right. And do we want anything else on there? I have these little pieces of paper. I don't know. I just feel like maybe I want to, I don't know. Do I want to put something here? Maybe. I don't know. It does it. Yeah, I think I do. Okay. This is just a piece of paper from the edge of the book. I'll show you where it came from if you didn't catch it, but I pulled it off of here. Yeah, just some of that. And uh, I'm just going to incorporate a little bit of that. I can't get this off my hand. Um, here, there, yeah. I don't know. So little things that you can use along the way to have fun with. Now you can keep going, but I'm just going to do basics right now. So I probably come along and do other things here, but maybe we'll do that at the end. Um, all right. So now we're going into section number four. Here's another pocket and empty. Hello. Hello. What was I thinking? All right. Let's find something to go in there. This is nice. That, that might go very nicely in there. Uh, I could fold it in half. This is a little coffee dyed piece of paper, but I want to put a little stamp or something at the top uh, to give it a um, a little pizzazz. And I have this cute little heart stamp. It's a very small, oops, sorry, too close. Uh, this little heart stamp. This is a little piece of um, uh, coffee dyed paper from a notepad. They look really cute when you uh, dye those up. Okay, here we go. There. All right. And I'm just going to tuck you in here. That's all I'm going to do is just tuck you in there. Will you fit? No? Okay, that's fine. I can work with you. I will, I, will, I will work around you. Okay, will that be too long? No, maybe not. Maybe all right. Let's try that. Here we go. There we are. What's going on down there? I have to stick my finger down there. I, know, I think I didn't glue it well. I, I mushed the glue up too high. Okay, here we go. Going in again. And are we fit? Okay, no, we need to fold the bottom. This is the way it goes, you know, when you're making a journal, you got to stop and figure out all these little steps along the way to get a piece of paper to fit. There we go. We're in. We're good. Okay, so now we can do our last envelope flip. Um, oh, okay, so this is an envelope that this is half open. I've almost got it open, but uh, this envelope was actually opened. It's a vintage envelope on the side. So maybe I'm not going to open this, but I want to do a flip. So, okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to close this back up. I'm going to retreat. Here I am retreating. Okay, that never happened. I'm going to re-glue it back together. Because sometimes your envelopes, a lot of these vintage ones, um, are open on one end. So there we go. Let's just get everybody back together the way we were. Okay. So now what you can do with something like this, these, this is kind of fun, is you can do a bottom uh, flip. Now you could fold the envelope as so. Okay, maybe we want to mark our end like there's an opening here so somebody knows. Well, we might not, well, maybe we'll ink it all over. Okay, I'm using two colors of ink, the, um, um, the worn lipstick and the brown. So, I don't know, it's kind of fun. Yeah, maybe even the black. See how this is edged in black? Let's come in here with the big black. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's nice. Okay. 
So leave that one that way. Now this one will do this. This is um, like the drawbridge. There we go, coming down. Okay. Yes, Holly. I don't know if you heard Holly, but Holly agrees that that is dandy. That's what you should do. That's what you should do, Mom. You just carry on and keep gluing. So you can use one concept, an envelope flip, and have it flip up and down and sideways and around in a hundred different ways and get many different looks in your journal with one easy concept. Okay, so let's find something fun to put in here. Okay, so we do have a, um, it's like there's a pocket here and there's also this space, which we'll do something with maybe another day, but right now, maybe this would go in here. That's very nice. I just took some cardstock and stamped some rubber stamps on them. These are great um, for uh, adding extra journal cards. Um, very fun. Okay, I'll put you in there. Okay. And uh, you can even add little foo-foos on the top if you want to do something like that. I still have some of this so we can use matching uh, uh, stuff in here if you wanted to make it into a, like a little journal tag sort of thing. You could totally do that. Um, if I don't have enough of this to tie a knot, sometimes I'll just do a twist. Yes, and you can take the twist and just staple it right on here, which it's, it's not quite as bulky as a knot. Let me get my stapler. Where are we time-wise? I have totally forgotten time. Okay, we're kind of getting, we're kind of getting there. All right, here we go. And we're, there we are, and we're in. So you are in here. There we go, everything is good. And then maybe we want to put, some, well, that we won't decorate behind it. We'll do that later. That's right. Okay. So we have completed four envelope flips. Let's just take a quick look. We glued that in. We did that. Here, this is envelope flip. Uh, signature number two, or envelope flip, I believe, is located here. Oh, that's a very nice and it's well secured. I'm just going to leave it as is. It has the open pocket with goodies inside. You can go in deeper. And... Um, do, do, do. Now we're in envelope number, we're in signature number three, trying to locate envelope flip number three. We did one, right? Yes. Here we go. So you, she needs a word or something here. I think I'm going to add a word. Yeah. Uh, but we'll decorate her later. And then we have this guy down. Right. So it's a very easy way to incorporate different things, different kinds of envelopes, different kinds of flips. There you go. So um, let's see. Uh, where are you? Are, Sunny, are you there? No, he's off somewhere else right now. Okay, well, we'll find him in a minute. Um, so I hope you had fun here. I hope you enjoyed this little segment of the Slow Crafting, How to Make a Journal from a Book. This is episode number six, and we are carrying on. And I, um, uh, for everybody who is new, I have videos that come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, the Paper Outpost podcast. Uh, it's free to listen to. I have a free e monthly emailed newsletter. Hey, if you haven't signed up for that, make sure you do because you get free digital images. I, I email one a month and I put it in different sizes on one paper that you can print out at home and use it in different ways in your artwork. And uh, I also have an Etsy shop where I sell fundals, which are collections of old papers and um, interesting ledgers and postcards and uh, things like that. If you want to incorporate those old book pages, hand-dyed papers in your junk journals, uh, what happens is it's easier. Uh, I found for me, the way the, the fundal was created was I was constantly like getting up and down, going to get a piece out of a book, piece out of a book, piece out of something. And I found that if I just made like a, a, a satchel of things, uh, it was easier for me to go grab a satchel of things and uh, then just pull from that because I knew I had a nice variety in there. So that's uh, how the fundals were created. And uh, I also, um, uh, along with my vintage digi kits, which are printable downloads, I sell, I have a print and mail uh, service. So if you don't have a printer, but you would like to um, have those uh, pretty pictures, I will print those out and mail those to you. I do those in batches of 10, so all I need you to do is purchase the print and mail option and then email me your list of 10 DigiKit names or you can send it to um, through Etsy message. Either way is fine. My email address is pam at thepaperoutpost.com and uh, uh, I have an Amazon shop also uh, where you can find my favorite tools and supplies, um, favorite books uh, that a junk journaler might find that uh, come in handy. Um, I also have... Um, um, what else do I have in there? Oh, uh, craft storage ideas and also a sunny section, my little fluffy uh, 
uh, little pup has a favorite section in there. And I have a Facebook group if you'd like to come over and do some fun uh, weekly or monthly challenges or just seeing what you guys make from these videos. We'd love to see what you're up to. And um, all my links are in the description box below. Don't forget if you're on your phone you can click the title that should open up the description box. And if you had value or had fun or if you uh, find value or had some fun here please like, subscribe and share. I also have a merchandise shop if you're looking for um, t-shirts and mugs and sweatshirts and zip tooties with Create with Reckless Abandon or the paper outpost on there. Uh, feel free to check that out. And remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. Wait a minute, I'll see if I can sign a little snouty.